Hello and welcome back to another Chinese food adventure. I am finally back here in Changchun. It is December, which means it's very, very cold here in the northeast of China. But, you know, even though I'm back home, the food adventures do not stop because I realized the other day that there are still so many places in my to eat list here in Changchun that I haven't checked out yet. And that just will not do. So that's exactly what we're doing today in our food adventure, uh, starting with this place behind us here. So I came across this place a few weeks ago on my Damping homepage and it really spoke to me because as you may or may not know, I love me some carbs, especially carbs on carbs. And that's exactly what this is. I don't know if you can see this, but it's basically mashed potato rice noodles. And yeah, enough said, we're going to go check this out and see if it tastes as good as it looks. Wow. Mashed potato rice noodles. Am I in heaven? Or am I just in Changchun? <laughs> well, wherever I am, man, am I happy to be here because would you check out that bowl of food? Oh, so it seems you've got a few different choices when it comes to the protein for your dish. You've got some beef, you've got chicken, you've got ribs, but I've been told that the beef one is the most popular, so that's the one I'm going for. But it seems that apart from the choice of protein, the base dish remains the same. Basically just noodles, potato, Look at that gravy, licious potato. It's then topped with some of that saucy beef, some mushrooms, and then finally some crunchy peanuts. Okay, so check out this bowl of food. It is so, so heavy, so dense as you can imagine. And here we also have all of these extra toppings that we can add if we want. So of course I'm gonna go in with some chili. Now that I know this is from Changsha, I'm sure it's supposed to be quite spicy. As well as a healthy dose of coriander and spring onion to add a bit of a zing to what I assume will be quite a heavy bowl of food. And there we have it, our final masterpiece. I mean, talk about a plate of food. I'm so curious to try this. I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and mix it up. So we still have some chunks of potato in there, but for the most part, it's quite like mashed together. So it's giving like an extra bit of texture to those noodles. Let's try it and see if it's as hearty as I feel like it's gonna be. Mm. Wow. Mm. The problem with this dish is it's so damn delicious. I haven't been able to stop to get any words out. I've just been gulping it down. I've pretty much had half of it already. It is so good. And one thing I wasn't really expecting is that it's not as heavy as I thought it would be. I know you've got noodles in here, you've got potato in there. That's kind of a recipe for a heavy dish, right? But I think thanks to those additions, like the coriander and the spring onion, you've got the crunch from those peanuts, which is absolutely amazing amongst all that mushiness. So good, love a peanut. Um, but I think a lot of that lightness is coming from a zappiness from the gravy on top. It's, um, it's actually giving my mouth a little bit of a buzz, like a Sichuan peppercorn-like buzz. And it's got that Sichuan peppercorn taste to it, which I wasn't expecting. It was after this exchange, I noticed that every table has a bottle of Hua Jiao Yu, peppercorn oil. So if you're a fan of the buzz, you can add more. I like it a lot. I will be back. So there we go, stop number one, we are done. I am so satisfied, that was everything I could have wished for and more, but that is not the end of our food adventure. Of course we have more places we're checking out here in Changchun today. So let's get to stop number two. A few minutes later. So our second place is kind of in the middle of nowhere. I've just gotten out of the taxi. We are by the highway and it's just this tiny little shop that you can kind of see tucked away just behind there. So I really don't know whether this place is gonna be any good or not. I saw it online. It looks very like internet famous. Like it looks really pretty. Will the food be good? Who knows? They actually specialize in one thing in particular, which is huadra, which is like a mantou, like a Chinese style bread, but fancier basically. It's got like some creases in it and apparently it comes in all different kinds of flavors, which is very intriguing. I don't know how open they are. It looks, oh. oh. Oh, wait, they have some stuff. So this is the place. Wait, wait, it's a median tan. A salma dian, shiva. So the one that everyone is talking about online is this one, duo ro hua zhan, literally meaty hua zhan. So I decided to get that one too. Can you add it? Oh, nahao. It really is one of the more random food stores I visited. Okay. Oh, it opens. <laughs> there we go. We've got our hydrant. So it's a bit chilly. So we're just going to eat this. 
ASAP and get into a taxi to our next spot because yes, there will be a next spot. Anyway, um, I have to say these have got to be the prettiest quad dryer I have probably ever seen. This is their famous one that everyone is talking about online, uh, Doro. And then I also have one here that is like a little bit spicy and it seems to be um, a duck. Filled? I mean, it makes sense. We're slowly ticking our way through the carb food pyramid. We've had our potato, we have had rice noodles, and now we are in for some bread. I want to try this, uh, this Doro one first. I mean, look how meaty it is. Oh, and it goes in the inside as well. Oh my God, how amazing does that look? It's still warm. Oh, and it smells so oniony. Oh, yum. Mm. <laughs> I mean, check how chocolate block that is. It's oniony from those chives in there, super, super chivey. It's meaty. It's really soft. That bread almost has a creaminess to it, actually. Somehow reminds me of a Chinese croissant with all those layers in there. Worth it. Now let's try this other one, which he said is going to be a little bit spicy. No. It's not spicy at all. I think he's giving me the wrong one by mistake because that's actually sweet. I think that's actually date. Um, it's nice. It's also super soft. You can taste they're really, really freshly made. I don't like it as much as the, um, as the meat one because I guess it just doesn't have as many layers in there. Um, but it's good. This, I have two or three bites. I'm good. But that other meat one, man, I want to have four or five of those every morning for breakfast. So damn good. I still have a few more bites here. It's cold. Let's get in the taxi and go in the next spot number three. We have arrived at our next food stop. Uh, we are just around the corner from Guilin Road, which is one of the more popular, like, touristy food streets here in Chongchun. And every time I'm in this area, every time I pass this store behind me here, there is always, always, always a queue, except for, of course, today. But guys, I promise it's really popular. I don't know why there's no queue when I decide to actually come here and film it. Um, I'm still not quite sure what it actually sells. I'm a little silly. I've always wondered, oh, I wonder what they sell here. But they actually have this massive sign here that says Zao Zifang, which basically means date shop. So they sell like little pastries and little muffins made of dates or jujubes. So yeah, let's see what we should get. Uh, so I've ordered two things. One is like the, the original famous one that you can see here. And I've also got what looks like a beautiful little muffin with some walnuts in it. The smell of this shop is absolutely amazing. It smells like Chinese dates. <laughs> so I found myself a little Starbucks here. Uh, to actually, I think this is a great plan because these are cute little tea cakes and I think it'll go perfectly with a cup of tea. I've got myself some green tea here, Bilo Twin to be precise. And um, yeah, I've got my cute little bag of muffins here that I've been wanting to try for a while. Um, let's try with the original one, uh, the one they're most famous for. How cute does that look? Ooh. Oh, look, it reminds me of like a, a really moist like banana bread and it smells very datey. Mm. That texture is absolutely perfect because it's actually a little bit like crispy on the outside and then the inside is so soft and still a little bit warm as well. Absolutely perfect. And as for the taste itself, it's actually quite sweet, which I wasn't really expecting because Chinese sweets typically aren't really that sweet and um, very, very datey. You can definitely taste the date in there. It's got like clumps of date everywhere. So I feel like it must be really, really healthy because like people are always telling me dates are really good, especially during the winter time. They're like a warming food. So I feel like this is like really, really healthy. At least that's what I'm telling myself after my third consecutive carb of the day. <laughs> and this was a really good decision. Goes perfectly with tea. Anyway, we are not done. We still have this majestic muffin here. How cute does this look? I very rarely see a muffin in China. Um, in Australia, like pretty much every cafe will have something that looks like this, you know, on offer to have with your tea or with your coffee. So yeah, this looks really ex nice. I'm excited to try it. Let's crack it open, huh? Oh, again, that texture looks absolutely amazing. Mm. Mm. I think I may have actually found myself a new weekly tradition, which is coming here, getting myself a nice hot cup of tea and getting myself one of these. This is just so nostalgic of my childhood. I grew up eating muffins. Mum would make them for me. I'd always have one in my lunchbox. 
And this is very muffin like, it even has the little cup here. And um, the flavor, I actually like even more than the first one that we had. Thanks to the addition of those walnuts, it provides like an extra texture. It provides a nuttiness that kind of tones down the sweetness of that batter. It's still got a datiness, but it's not as intense as the first one. It's absolutely perfect. I mean, what a lovely afternoon. Have you? Have my tea? Have my muffin? Man, we've had some really great things today. And it constantly reminds me doing days like this, that there's always more to explore in the city that you're living. You just have to go out, give yourself the motivation and just do it. It is nighttime, time for dinner, last stop of the day. And look who has joined me. Just finished Hello. work <laughs> and we are going together to this spot behind us here. Apparently it's like a Chongchun classic. We're having fried dumplings. They're famous. Great, let's get in. It's minus 10 degrees. Yeah, it's really cold. <laughs> so it's a cozy little place, six tables in total. And oh, these are the fried dumplings in question. The menu is simple. You've got fried dumplings and you've got beer, but you've also got these side dishes you can choose from. We've got a nice big plate of tofu. Also this plate of ba pi yu, kind of like a preserved fish, as well as these crispy shrimps. Yeah, look how small they are and crispy. Oh, very crispy and fishy. These ones we also have a lot. In small prawn. Yeah. But you would get them from the market, then you take them home, and then you spend like, I don't know how many hours <laughs> sitting at home and just getting trying to get rid of the, the skin. Would you peel mine? Huh? Would you peel mine for me? If I eat it with the shell, I don't have to peel anymore, and that's my least favorite part of eating prawns. But if I have it with the shell, when it's steamed, I think I still prefer the consistency and the texture of it without the shell. I think that probably the best solution going forward is to just get someone to peel it for me. Of you course. need two of mine? Yeah. Mm. I chose the right one, guys. How many years have you been here? 30 years. 30 years. They've been here for over 30 yeah. years. So once you've placed your order of how many dumplings you want, it's then relayed via this walkie-talkie to the kitchen. She has like this. It's a microphone. I guess there's a connection for her to the into the kitchen. Yeah. And about 10 minutes later, out they come, freshly fried and glorious. These are the ones with vegetables. These are vegetables and these are meat. It's the best of both worlds. You've got that soft, juicy dumpling skin with a golden, deliciously crispy bottom. What's with the sauce? What about the sauce? It turns out that here they actually have a special sauce combo. It's a mustard. Yeah, it's mustard. It's a So we've got some mustard, we've got some chili. And then this is chili, right? Wow. I actually have not had a sauce like this before with a bit of mustard inside. Well, let's see how it tastes with one of those juicy guo lao. Oh, this is a this is a vegetarian one. This one has um egg and chive inside. Oh, it's super super fragrant. And that dipping sauce. I wasn't sure about the the mustard, but it gives it a very nice taste. It's really sauce. good. Mm. It's quite tangy. So it's like, it's got the vinegar in there, which gives it that, you know, that sourness, but the mustard gives it a tang. And it went even better with the meat-filled ones. The tanginess of the mustard really contrasted perfectly with that oniony meatiness. Oh, the meat one is amazing. And for the local experience? Have you had it, uh, dumplings or noodles like this before with raw garlic? No. So your first time. So a bit of piece of garlic. Yeah. It's a good combination, really. You should try. I actually haven't done this in a long time. No? Uh, no, because I'm really not a fan of raw garlic, I have to say. But maybe my taste have evolved. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not enough evolvement in the taste. <laughs> we were just driving home and I passed by another store of this Zao Zifeng. Um, and so I thought I'd stop so that you could try some. Because nice. I, this I had today, I had the this one, the walnut version, uh, which I've gotten myself three uh, right now to have. But since you're allergic to walnuts, I have got you oh, chocolate. chocolate. Here. Chocolate one. I'm interested to hear what you think. I mean, it's Ooh. very, I, I found it quite interesting finding this in China. You know how it smells? Like a muffin. No, it smells like cinema. 
the cinema. Yeah. Can mm. I have it bite? I haven't tried the chocolate one before. Okay, I also bought you four others, so. Okay. Also good. Also good. I still prefer the walnut one. Well, that officially brings us to the end of today's food adventure. Thank you so much for watching. It's been so nice getting a bit outside my comfort zone in the city that I've now settled in and finding some new places. I mean, this I'm so excited to see. You know, they've got stores all over the place, so I'm gonna no. be eating this a lot in the future. Anyway, um, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm actually gonna be taking a few weeks off content. Um, I'm going overseas in a few days. I'm going to Poland, which is really exciting because I'm actually half Polish and I've never been to Poland before. So really excited to interact a bit more with that side of my heritage and learn more about where half of my family comes from. So I'm going to take a few weeks off as I explore and travel. Also, you're coming over for Christmas yep. and you're bringing your parents to Poland with you. Yes. So our families are going to be meeting for the first time, which is a huge deal. I mean, we are getting married next year. I don't know if I've uh, shared this yet on my channel, but we have set a date. So yeah, I wanted to say a very big thank you to everyone for, you know, following along on my food adventures this year. This will be my last video of the year, last video of 2023. And uh, yeah, I wish everyone who celebrates a happy Christmas. Uh, otherwise, a very happy new year, a happy times in the year ahead. And I will see you all in 2024. Have a walnut cake for me. Well, not you, because you're allergic. And uh, I will see you next time on my channel in a few weeks. Bye, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. <laughs>